So, uh, Pradeep Bhai just mentioned that uh, after Siddharth Gautam got enlightened, he did open eyes meditation, and that is indeed true. Uh, after his enlightenment, he sat under the tree with closed eyes for seven days. And then he walked seven steps uh, away from the Bodhi tree um, in the southeast direction. And he turned around and he looked at the Bodhi tree without blinking for seven days. So, open eyes meditation without blinking for seven days, seven nights. And thank you for bringing it up. I knew that, but I did not connect it with open eyes meditation. <laughs> so, if you go to Mahabodhi temple today, even today, in the southeast corner of Bodhi tree, there is an Animissa Chetya. Animissa is without closing eyes. So, there is an Animissa Chetya even today. So, thank you very much. It was, uh, it was an aha moment for me, just a moment back. <laughs> so, I just want to uh, uh, share with you um, uh, my purpose of coming here. All-night meditation is uh, a fairly standard practice for monks in Thailand. Uh, on every full moon day, new moon day and Ashtami, that is four days a month, all uh, Thai forest monks practice full night meditation as a mandatory practice. Whether you can do it or not, one is not allowed to sleep on these four days a month. And then there are other days like uh, New Year uh, days uh, or just any day that the teacher feels like. We only find out about a, a full night meditation practice at 5 p.m. That to tonight might be a full night meditation and then it is a full night. So there is no pre-preparation, uh, there is no uh, warning, there is nothing. And then of course we don't uh, eat anything after 12. So we always have an empty stomach. So that really helps. So, it was uh, a very uh, welcome uh, opportunity for me to practice full night meditation because I've uh, been away from Thailand for um, because of COVID. But more interesting for me was to see with my own eyes that lay people who have uh, f of, uh, a complete life with children, responsibilities, job, what not, doing all that all day and then coming in the night and doing full night meditation and going there, going back the next day and doing everything again. <laughs> that is a eighth wonder of the world for me. And I have, uh, with assumed permission from everyone, I have taken videos, not, not many, just one or two in pictures, to show to my teacher in Thailand. He speaks only Thai and of course, he's lived uh, in, in the forest all his life, to actually show, and he loves India, and he has so much love and respect for India, saying that the Buddha was born there. He says Buddha was born there because Siddharth Gautam was born in Lumbini in Nepal, but Buddha was born in Bodh Gaya. Uh, <laughs> so he said, I love Indian people because Buddha was born there, you know. So he has so much love and respect for India and Indians that when I show him these pictures, I think he'll just get up from his seat and start walking and he'll say, I want to go and meet all of these people who meditate all night and who are not monks. These are people who have children, who have husbands and wives and uh, father-in-laws and mother-in-laws and mothers and uh, fathers and uh, responsibilities of... Um, uh, you know, earning and everything, and they still are doing it. And I think the uh, rest of the monks are going to get in trouble because... <laughs> no, no, I'm saying they'll get in trouble because the Guruji will say that, see, these lay people can do all this, then you guys don't have an excuse. Right? I think uh, that uh, that invitation will happen uh, right right away. 
um, but um, then instead of four days a week, it will be every day. <laughs> so he'll say, if lay people can do it, you can also do it, and then you know it will be every day. I'm sure monks will also greatly appreciate this because as a monk, I can tell you that you know giving up uh, our lives in the name of the Buddha is the best thing we've done. Right? It's the greatest blessing. It's a new birth. Uh, literally a new birth, you get a new name and although I did not realize this when I uh, took the Diksha um, but slowly and slowly it sinks in and in the last six years it has sunk in that it really is a new birth and uh, it's difficult to explain but everything we can do to make this new birth meaningful and um, achieve the purpose of this new birth which is liberation is welcome even if it is at the cost of our life because that purpose of the life is this so uh, this this uh, art of staying awake um, although I have not mastered it yet and it's a transition it's a transition it will not happen overnight literally not happen overnight you know it's an expression <laughs> but here this expression is so true <laughs> So I think this art of staying awake uh, at night is uh, going to be valuable for me as a monk but I wish I had gotten this art 20 years back when I was a college student, right? And we were all being awake in the wrong way, drinking coffee and tea and some people using some substances or whatever. <laughs> but if we knew this wholesome art of being awake, we would have been better students, I would have been a better engineer. I would have been a better boss, not, not be irritated in the end of a whole night of working and I definitely I'll, I'll be a better monk, uh, you know, with, with a good understanding of this art. I'm very hopeful that uh, if I can do it, anyone can do it. And eventually we will all be able to master this art as long as we are committed to it. And I think every person in this room is committed. You know, everyone is sitting and, and uh, talking about this is, is uh, proof enough, right? So, um, my purpose of coming here is truly, truly fulfilled by seeing everyone here and practicing. Especially Naresh and his wife, uh, they, they did not even succumb to the excuse of, oh, we have small children. It was very easy for them to say, oh, oh, we've got small children at home, we cannot come. No, they got the children here. That's, I, I mean, I, if I was not a monk, I would salute you, you know. That is, uh, that is just absolutely amazing, right? So, uh, with my heart, I, I, uh, I share the blessings that may every person in this room realize and be an arhant, a buddha in this very lifetime. And with the beautiful art that you have learnt, I was telling everyone that if the lifetime was going to be 80 years, you will live 160 years worth of life in just 80 years, right? In the calendar sense, but in a true sense, probably 200 years worth of life. Because if you don't sleep in the night, that one hour needed to go into sleep, and then one hour needed to go out, come out of sleep. And then all this uh, laziness and the dry, uh, drowsiness, all that won't be there, the quality of life will be so much more productive and more sharp, right? We've all seen Prabhuji being absolutely bright and uh, charming, of course, right? Who agrees that he's super charming? Yes? So charming and active and bright and creative uh, to the highest level all the time. So you can imagine how you'll feel that, how you'll feel if you are all that, all the time like him, right? So, um, um, blessings to everyone that, you know, may you be all of that in this very lifetime and realize the purpose of the life, which is really liberation. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I question you, how is your journey in this 11 days? What is your journey or your experiences? So when we, the first day we met, you know, we, we had a small chat and you said, whatever level you are, we'll, we'll take you a level up. 
if i see the levels that was mentioned in the beginning i think i have not leveled up one i have leveled up multiple times in just those 11 days so mm, uh, i'm very very happy about that you know there's nothing more uh, um, uh, joyful and uh, a source of happiness for me to level up uh, in just 11 days right and with the hope that there'll be many more level ups coming soon you know on this path so thank you very much Thank <laughs> you.